Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek and I like to talk about tech and travel and all the gear that goes into that. And today I've got a really cool one for you. Um, I've been using GoPro products for probably five or six years now, ever since the Hero 3 Plus Black. I had the four as well. Um, and then I skipped a few generations in the five and six and went and got the seven. And now I skipped the eight and now I'm going with the Hero 9 Black, which literally just came out this last week here. Um, it took a little bit longer to get to me than normal. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen a few reviews from other YouTubers and stuff like that. I don't get any early releases or anything like that since I'm a small channel. So I paid for this with my own money. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably someone who bought the Hero 7 back in the day and you're looking to upgrade, but you're wondering if the Hero 9 is worth the upgrade. And that's exactly what I'm gonna explore here today. So stay tuned. All right, so let's get into it. It literally came to me about a half an hour ago. I just took the cardboard box off from UPS and it's packaged in a little bit of protective plastic here. But from what I've heard, they actually use a lot less plastic now to be a little bit more eco-friendly. You can see that here, just a little bit of plastic and paper actually. So the card, kind of cardboard thick paper on the box there tears pretty easily. And I'm gonna tear that off and get into the real box here. There's a little tear tag at the bottom to make it a little bit less messy. So you just pull like that, toss it off to the side there. And this is nowhere near what the packaging used to be like before. It used to have that sort of bucket, the clear bucket or display case on the top that you would see the camera through. This just comes in a little bit of paper that you can recycle or toss out, and then this nice carrying case. Just before I toss out the paper covering, I'll go through some of the features that they've added to the new Hero camera, and that's gonna be 5K, so now it records 5K at 30 with HyperSmooth 3.0, and it does 1080 and 240 frames a second. It's a 20 megapixel sensor now instead of the 12 megapixel that they had on the previous three, four, maybe even five cameras. They've been using that sensor for a long time. They've also added 1080p live streaming and webcam mode. Like the last few GoPro cameras, it's actually kept the 33 feet or 10 meters water resistance rating, voice controls and data overlays that you can use in the software to actually uh, tell your speed, your height, stuff like that. Then of course, they kept the touch screen on the back, but GoPros are notorious for having kind of finicky touch screens, so we'll see if that survives onto the Hero 9. So right now, there's two ways to purchase on their website. No matter which bundle you choose, you save a hundred dollars if you go with the subscription to GoPro service for a year. The subscription includes unlimited cloud storage for all of your GoPro videos, up to 50% off of GoPro.com accessories, and you get total camera replacement. And that's just a little bit of clever marketing on GoPro side. So the carrying case that comes in here has got this sort of textured feel to it. It looks like a pretty nice case and it does feel padded, so it's got some construction to it. Um, and then this nice firm zipper here. And if we open that up, We've actually got the GoPro, the cable that you would plug it into the charger, some mounting brackets right here, the battery, which this time it's 1720 milliamp hours instead of the 1220 milliamp hours from the previous battery. So this is actually going to last a bit longer and I'll do a test for you here later as well the traditional GoPro screw. I much prefer getting other screws actually. These, I don't really like the, the tightening mechanism on this, just not my favorite. We've also got some paperwork here, which subscribe to GoPro, uh, the cloud storage as well on their subscription site, and then how to use the camera, which I'm gonna toss these out because I don't need any of those. I already know how to use GoPros. We've got this kind of cardboard carrying case here uh, just for the packaging. Toss that aside as well. And we get onto the GoPro here. It's a bit chunkier than my Hero 7. I can already tell with it in the hand and I expected it to be like that because it has given us the front screen instead of the status screen of the previous versions. It actually has a full color display now and the button has changed sides. So in the Hero 8 Black, I think is when they changed the menu button to the left side of the camera instead of the right and the battery door is taking up the right side now instead of the bottom on my Hero 7. So if we peel off this plastic now, or even just slide it off here, it looks like it can just slide off. We have got the camera with another little screen right there, take off the plastic. 
The front screen has some plastic as well, and so does the camera lens itself. And another thing that GoPro listened to with the community of Hero 8 users and Hero 7 users is the fact that on the Hero 7 and before, you could actually change out this lens cover um, so that if you cracked it or anything like that, you could just put a new one on, it wouldn't be a big deal. But on the Hero 8, they took that away and people were not happy about it. So they've actually brought that back here. And all you have to do here is just give it a firm turn two times around maybe. Let's see, there we go. We've got it off now. And as you can see, that's interchangeable like before. That was actually easier than my Hero 7, to be honest with you. And it just pops back into place. And as you can see on the bottom of the camera, it also has the exact same style of mounting as the Hero 8 with these sort of lay flat finger mounts. And you just flip them up like that. Same as the GoPro Hero 8. And that's something I really liked about the design of the 8 over the 7 in previous models because you can mount it, but then you don't have to have the frame. All you gotta do is flip it down and put it on a table somewhere if you wanna use it like that. So here on the right side of the camera, we've got the battery compartment, and I think they've redesigned this uh, latch from the 8. Even though I don't have the 8, I've seen some. And all you gotta do is give it a firm pull down, pop it open like that. Right under the battery compartment, you have the USB-C charging and microphone adapter port right there as well. What's new about the left side of the camera is that there is a water vent here now. So this is actually meant to kind of drain the water faster. So when you dunk it in the water and you bring it back out, it vents out the water and then you can actually hear yourself. You're not so muffled right away when it comes out of the water. Well, before I go out and do any shooting tests around here, I'm actually gonna compare the size with the Hero 7 Black that I've got just right over here. And like I said, this does have to be in a cage to be mounted. So there is the battery door from the previous generations there on the bottom with no finger mounting uh, brackets. And as you can see there, there is quite a size difference um, with the Hero 9 Black being quite a chunky camera, but the way I wanna use it is for vlogging, obviously. That's why I got it because of the front screen here. So I do not mind at all that this is a little bit bigger of a camera. And as you can see from the angle here, the screen on the new GoPro Hero 9 is actually quite a bit larger than the Hero 7, yet they still have the bezels around the side. It's not sort of a full screen display that I was kind of hoping for. And taking a second look inside the battery compartment here, we do have the memory card slot for a micro SD card, but even though I was supposed to get one with this, I don't think they packed it. I've actually just went back through all of my packaging to see if I missed it somehow, and it's not there. All right, not to worry guys, after a few minutes of looking, I actually looked in the box that it was sent in and it comes in this thin little plastic right here. So it actually slipped under one of the bottom flaps. So I had to search the box, kind of tear it apart, but I did find it. So good on you GoPro, you did include it. So to start off on the Hero 9, it actually comes into the load screen. I'm gonna pick English and then it's got some legal stuff that you have to agree to. Then it tells you to install the GoPro app and leave your camera on and follow the instructions. I'll do that now and I'll grab my phone. And as you can see on the screen, I can pair with the new GoPro here and I'll have both of my GoPros paired to my app. And I'm gonna call it DLB Hero 9 Black. Sure. And there is a camera update available, so I am gonna do that before I start testing the software. So it looks like my battery level is still too low, so I'm gonna come back to this here in a second when the camera is up to date. Now that I've downloaded and installed the latest firmware from GoPro, I'm gonna take it outside and put it through its paces. So one of the main features that GoPro has touted for years is the HyperSmooth, which is their digital stabilization in camera. And they've been doing it since the Hero 6, I believe. And I have the 7, which has the original uh, HyperSmooth in it still. And then the Hero 9 is actually on HyperSmooth 3.0, which um, touts that it's going to be even more stable. Uh, the Hero 8 was incredibly stable from what I saw. And even the Hero 7, the stability, I didn't have any problems with it. So I've actually come out to my backyard. It's a little bright out here because it's about uh, an hour before sunset. I've got them both mounted. I've got the Hero 9 at 4K 30, and I've got the Hero 7 at 2.7K 30, both in linear mode, because that's the way I like to shoot my footage so that it works better with other cameras. Uh, it doesn't have that sort of GoPro fisheye look. And I'm just gonna do a simple shake test, so here we go. I'm super impressed with what GoPro has been able to do with its HyperSmooth over the generations. On the Hero 7, by no means is the HyperSmooth bad, but as you can see from that test footage, the HyperSmooth 3 just knocks it out of the park. I mean, 
Literally, I'm shaking the camera back and forth, up and down, side to side, pretty violently. And it's able to keep everything framed up really nicely. And the addition of the horizon leveling feature is something that I really appreciate. On to the next round of tests. While I'm out here in the backyard, I might as well go ahead and do an audio test. So what you're gonna hear first is the new Hero 9. And right now the media mod is back ordered, so I can't get that to try an external microphone. Um, and then on this side, we've got the Hero 7, so you'll be able to hear the difference there really quickly. I am just in my backyard and you'll hear some crickets chirping on both of these. Uh, this is just a pretty good test to get what the internal microphones sound like on the new Hero. Along with new mics, they also added a water vent on the side that I'm gonna go downtown and try out. For this test, I do have the camera side by side again. I've come down to our local dock on this nice morning, and I'm just gonna dip them in the lake to see if the vent actually does have an effect on the sound quality. Now both cameras do have the same rating of 33 feet. Now both cameras do have the same rating of 33 feet or 10 meters or 10 meters. And the audio on this should actually be coming back now. I can't hear it, but you'll be able to hear that. And the audio on this should actually be coming back now. I can't hear it, but you'll be able to hear that. And the Hero 7 might still have problems. Yeah, I think GoPro got it right. It does help a little bit with the audio out of the water. The next highly anticipated feature that I want to talk about isn't exclusive to GoPro, but if GoPro didn't include it on this iteration of their camera, I probably wouldn't have got it. One of my favorite new features though is this vlogging screen, so you don't have to buy the, uh, the screen mod that you could have put on the media mod on the Hero 8. I like this even though DJI came out with this before. This is something I've wanted for a long time because it's easy to frame up shots and it's portable so I can keep it in my pocket. I don't have to lug around an ADD like I used to. That way I can keep longer lenses on my Sony a7 III so that when I'm out and about I can actually get uh, better b-roll shots. GoPro also gives you four options of how you'd like to operate the selfie screen. So if you pull down from the menu and hit the selfie screen button there, you can see that we have four options. One is no front screen, status screen only, actual screen, and full screen. And if you want to activate the new hindsight feature, all you have to do is put it as a shortcut on your screen and tap that button right there, and that'll start the counter. All right, I just pushed the hindsight button, which gives me a 15 or 30 second buffer before I actually have to push the capture button to get my shot. So if you're in a situation where there's a lot of action and you don't want to miss it, but you don't want to waste memory on the card, all you got to do is turn on hindsight. It probably will leave the battery a little low, but I'm going to click that button now. And now I'm in normal recording mode. So anything before that was actually the hindsight feature. The majority of the time I probably won't have hindsight turned on just for the simple fact that essentially it's constantly recording to the card, which will drain your battery a lot. Next up, I'm gonna do a couple of image quality tests starting with the 5K resolution. So this is a 5K test of the GoPro Hero 9 here at the lake. So before I leave the lake, since it's such a sunny morning, I'm actually gonna do a quick high dynamic range test. The video looks properly exposed here. If I'm looking into the sun, it's probably pretty good as well. But then when I turn it around, and put my head kinda in the sun there. I look pretty dark on the screen. I don't know what this camera is rated for uh, dynamic range, but I'll put that next to me here right now. As you can see, they've also improved on the flaring on the lens there. This is directly into the sun. You can see on the Hero 7 that it's a little bit of a, a longer flare there. This actually looks like they did a really good job just from the back screen here. I'll have to review it inside as well, but I'm pretty impressed. So getting back to that new horizon leveling feature that's actually built into the GoPro cameras this time around, um, as you can see, as I turn my arm, it's actually gonna level until about 30, 45 degrees and then it clicks in, um, but you can actually do a little trick that stops that. <laughs> little dog up there. But there's actually a trick that you can do to make it go all the way around. 
So if you go into the settings, so pull down from the top and actually click the max mod button, um, even though I don't have the max mod right now, it actually still works pretty well. So if you click that button, you can actually go all the way around and I'll show you that here next. I've now turned on the max mod feature and I've got it on wide and not super wide because I actually like the field of view a little bit better. It gives the sensor a little bit more to play with. So I'm just gonna rotate my arm and as you can see, my head is going to stay in the shot just fine unlike the Hero 7 next to it. Also, having the ability to keep your horizon constantly level is a great feature because GoPros are pretty small cameras and it's pretty easy to get off axis just by slightly turning your wrist. So having that feature built in is a big improvement over the previous generation where you would have had to use the software. Another software feature GoPro has included this time around is the ability to take night time-lapse videos. By going into the settings and choosing your night lapse, you can actually customize it to output to video instead of photos, which looks something like this. And also a new time warp feature that allows you to slow everything down into real time by pushing the back of your camera during your time warp. The button there that says real speed start and then it goes back into real speed and all I have to do is turn it around, push it again, and we'll go right back into the hyperlapse. I think this feature could be useful when using this for long hyperlapse style videos where you wanna give a little bit of exposition or even just to give yourself notes for editing later. And before I give my conclusion on whether you should upgrade to this camera or not, I'm gonna do that battery test I told you about at the beginning. As you can see by the three timers above me, I've got the 4K30 running on the Hero 9 and the Hero 7, and I've also got the 5K30 to give a little bit of a comparison at the camera on its highest settings. As you can see, all cameras make it past the one hour mark with the Hero 9 at 5K30 coming in at one hour and five minutes. The next one down at the slightly lower resolution of 4K30 is the Hero 7 with one hour and 15 minutes. And finally, outlasting all of the other tests is the Hero 9 once again at 4K30 coming in at one hour and 27 minutes. Honestly, that was to be expected with its substantially larger battery capacity this time around. In conclusion, I think the Hero 9 is all around an absolutely great camera. If you're on the Hero 8, I'm not sure I would actually do the upgrade because they are very similar in a lot of regards, but that front screen is um, a huge factor in my decision making. If you're on the Hero 7 like I am, it is definitely worth the upgrade. Longer battery life, the front screen, better audio for sure. Um, the touchscreen is still a little finicky and I did have some problems with uh, making it actually stick when I touch my fingers to it or uh, do what I want it to do. Um, but that's not a deal breaker for me because it's not the touch interface that I bought the camera for. It's all of the other features that it has. I feel like with strong competition coming from DJI and Insta360 in the action camera space and especially on the software side of things, um, GoPro will need to step it up in the next few years, especially when it comes to trying to take down cameras such as the Insta360 ONE R that has the modular design. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was informative, and if you could please hit the like and subscribe button below and the little bell icon that will notify you of all my upcoming videos. The algorithm here on YouTube really likes that. That way, you can help out the channel by helping more people see it. Stay tuned to the channel for upcoming travel videos, and click here if you'd like to see some previous ones.